Well, greetings and welcome back. Today we are going to start on a video with a little bit about graphing, building graphs, what type of graphs we look at, when do we use certain types of graphs. Should be a fairly quick video, but just want to make sure you guys are up to speed on what types of graphs there are and how to go through and make them. So, by the end of this video, you should be able to differentiate between the different types of graphs. You've probably heard of the different types of graphs before, bar graph, line graph, scatter plot, pie chart, those types of things. And then also be able to correctly draw and create a variety of different graphs to analyze data. Different graphs are going to be used for different sets of data. So we need to make sure we know which ones to use at which times. Again, no key vocabulary here. Just uh, make sure you understand the different types of graphs and we will go from there. So uh, the first type of graph we're going to look at is what's called a bar graph. And that's one that most people are probably familiar with. It's a comparison of categories. So uh, they're, they're completely separate from one another. The x-axis is typically the categories. Remember, the x-axis is the uh, horizontal axis, and the y-axis is your vertical axis. And in this one, the y-axis is the measured value. So here, there's a survey done about what type of pet you own. Um, you have a nice little list here of the different number of animal or different types of animals and the number which each one owns. So that's data is best shown in a bar graph. We have specific categories and a measured value that we are comparing against. A line chart is typically used to show changes or trends over a period of time. The x-axis is typically the time interval, whether it be days, minutes, seconds, weeks, months, years, whatever. And the y-axis is the measured value again. So taking a look at the graph, we have temperatures in New York City. And as you can see on the x-axis, we have days. So there's time taking place. On the y-axis, it's degrees in Fahrenheit. So you can make nice little comparisons there. This is the one we would typically use to show changes over a period of time. Pie charts are used to illustrate parts of a whole. So if we're looking at a percentage or we're trying to compare numbers to one another, we usually, usually use a pie chart. So you see here, this is a good pie chart. We have a variety of different colors. Percentages are on the outside. And then you've got a key to the right that helps you understand which portion of the pie chart represents which category. So it makes it very easy to to look at very easy to use. We typically won't use pie charts. They're pretty difficult to draw on a paper. Most of the time pie charts are going to be made by computers. A scatter plot just is using coordinates to display data and typically we look for trends between two variables. So for example we look at this on the right here we have on the x-axis temperature and on the y-axis sales and what we are doing is looking to see if there's a trend between those two variables and as you can see here as the temperature of the graph or as the temperature increases in the graph the sales increase as well. That helps us create correlations between different sets of data and helps us understand more about the world around us. So scatter plots are going to be used quite frequently in this class that you're taking. So what needs to be included in a good graph? You need to be good connoisseurs of, of graph making. That must include a good title, that explains what the graph shows and typically this is a graph that shows the dependent variable versus the independent variable or some title that gives us a very specific idea as to what the graph is about so you want to make sure that the title is very very concise and very very specific on what the graph is what we're looking at in the graph you also want to label each axis and you also want to include units so in the graph there you have height in inches and time in weeks a couple other things you may want to include are a key if some of the data is hard to read. So if you have multiple lines in a line graph, those lines need to be keyed so we know which line is which. We also need to be aware of the scale that we're using. The scale represents the number of increments that we go up each time we go up a line on the graph. So that depends on the data that you're looking at. If we're looking at numbers solely between 100 and 110, you don't want a graph that goes from 150 all the way down to zero. You want to scrunch that in, uh, scrunch that axis, so that way you have individual data points that are a little bit easier to read. So here, the plant growth chart, we're not going to have a y-axis that goes from zero to 150. 
that's not going to show us what we need to see in the graph. But because the highest height in inches is 10, we're going to want to make 0 to 10 or 0 to 12 or whatever our uh, increments on our graph. So we just need to be aware of that and think about what the scale, what the, what's going to be the best scale for us to use when we're making our graphs. And then making sure we label those with uh, an appropriate title and units. Um, again, just to reiterate, make sure you include a key if, uh, if necessary. Some graphs don't need a key. Bar graphs typically don't because, again, we're breaking the data down into discrete categories. But here, without a key, in this favorite ice cream pie chart, we would have no idea what those slices of pie represent. <laughs> Sorry, I just giggled a little bit because we're talking about pie and ice cream, you know, dessert. Yeah. Anyways, so you need to make sure you include a key with your with your graphs if necessary. Some graphs don't need it, but some do, and you should be aware of which ones will need it. Again, we just talked about this. Proper scale is important. We want to be able to show good trends in your data. So this graph right here. You know, the, the scale is not that great. We're looking at Jill's secondary math scores and how they've increased over time. But notice all of the blank space at the bottom of the graph. The best way to scale this would probably be from 60 to 100, and then going up either by multiples of 5 or multiples of maybe 2 going up the scale. This way, we can do better comparisons of data. So try to fill up that graph as much as possible, and make sure you show good trends in your data. So let's, let's take a look at some crappy graphs because some of these graphs are, are not very good. The three-dimensional pie chart is not a very good graph for a couple of reasons. What's nice here is that it is labeled, but it does not include any percentages. That kind of does not make it a very good graph. Also, because it's three-dimensional, the item A in the back is very difficult to make comparisons on the size of that pie compared to some of the rest of them. Whereas with a two-dimensional graph, it makes it a little bit easier to see things. Now the two-dimensional graph over here, fairly good. We've got our percentages around the, the, the wheel here. We have our items that are located off to the side. Um, this is a, a better pie chart. This is the, the better representation of what you would want to see of the one on the left. So if we take a look here, and this is going to be the question that I'm going to ask you, and I want you to write this and the answer to this down in your notes because it will be included in your Google form. Which of these two charts that are, you see here is the best chart for comparing data? So we know they're both bar charts, but one of them ha is better than the other in comparing data. I want you to identify that chart, and then I also want you to tell me why that particular chart is better than the other. I'll give you a few seconds to look at that. All right, so again, just breaking down the logic here, generating graphs is very important in science. We're going to be doing it a lot, particularly in our labs. And it's very important that we use graphs for data comparison and research. We go back to the last video about drawing logical conclusions. A good graph is going to help us draw better, more logical conclusions than a poor graph. So we want to make sure that we draw the best graphs possible. And building those high quality graphs is going to help explain your data in a very clear and concise way that other people can understand. But remember, we're doing science not just for ourselves, but we're doing it for other people. We're doing it so that other people can understand our research and hopefully draw the same logical conclusions that we draw. Again, here are our objectives for the day. Hope you enjoyed this little tidbit of information on graphs. Certainly there are far more graphs we can take a look at, but I think this will suffice for what we're doing today. Hope everybody has a great day, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.